I got this package from Amazon. It's um, too big to grab with one hand. This is one of those items that um, Amazon sellers send to me occasionally and want me to do a review. This time they want me to make a video about this thing. Normally these companies send random electronic projects, digital cameras, like little kids ones, uh, Apple Watch chargers, batteries, things like that. But this is not electronic in any way, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, still got nice weather. We're gonna go outside and do this. Also, there's a little bit less of an echo out here. It's supposedly a car trunk organizer that folds up. <laughs> Random, right? Appears to be red. Pretty hefty. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? This thing's enormous. Yeah, it's a collapsible car trunk organizer. Um, it's like accordion style. I'm gonna have to get creative about a video on this. I think the videos are supposed to be less than 90 seconds long. So, hmm. Well, I'm not really in the mood to film the video for this thing today, so we'll just, uh, we'll just file it here in the inbox for now. Actually, here in a couple hours, I'm gonna be uh, headed back to where my green van is parked, and I've got a friend that's gonna give me a hand and see if we can figure out what's going on. I got some of the technical manuals for it, and I think maybe the front uh, stabilizer motor mount might be what broke. And after I was hearing bolts falling on the ground, it makes me think that maybe just a bolt came loose and that's all it is. Um, but regardless, there's some parts stores that have all the mounts if I need them, and my friend will be able to help me out with it, and hopefully it's not too big a deal. Uh, we shall see though in a few hours. So I was just doing some maintenance on the uh, lift on this thing. I was going to top off the hydraulic fluid a little bit, and this hose, which is the fill line, uh, wound up cracking down here and started leaking out everywhere. As you can see, the level in this tank is not very high anymore. Um, it's bleeding. So I was able to cut off the damaged part of the hose with the utility knife and sort of slip it back on there for now. Uh, this is the plug that goes in the top of this, but yeah, I'm gonna have to buy a new piece of hose. You can see we've got fluid all over the place here, so. Yeah, and you can see too, the top of this tank is cracked. It doesn't get that full, but I'm gonna see about getting a new one of these tanks because this is just gonna be a constant mess. Okay, the stupid hose cracked again. I was trying to clean up some of the garbage underneath there and it cracked. So I'm gonna take it back off here, cut it again, and then have to be really, really careful not to touch this. Yeah, you can see that hose is just disintegrating. Ugh, gross. Uh, I think this hose has reached the end of its service life. Oh, I just thought, I'm gonna pull one of these caps off my magnet stick. That'll, uh, that'll cork that thing off. Okay, cool. That should fit right over the, um, the uh, hose barb there. Okay, I stuck this back on here temporarily so we can get enough fluid in here so the lift will operate. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the lift up as far as it'll go. That way the fluid level will be the lowest in here. And then I can uh, pull this hose back off and uh, put one of these little caps on it. All right. I don't know if you could hear the pump or not, but it was definitely starved for fluid. So now I'm gonna top this off with this broken hose and uh, get it up as high as I can or what's left in here. And then uh, we'll be able to put this plug on and we should have enough hydraulic fluid in there for it to actually operate. Oh man, you can watch the tube slowly cracking as I'm holding it here. Uh, this is gonna be a close one. I just have to be able to drive this van to the parts store and deploy the lift a couple of times. So we need enough fluid in here for that. Ugh. Okay, I think we're good to go. 
I got the little plug put on here. That's what I had uh, covering the uh, neodymium magnet on the end of my uh, control stick here. But yeah, I think uh, I think that should plug the leak for now. We've gotten the fluid level up here enough to where I think it should operate okay. So let's get this cleaned up and test it out. We're gonna lower this down all the way, then check the fluid level in the tank. It's up a little higher. Hopefully that's enough to make it operate. Yeah, it seems like we're good. Cycle it a couple more times just to make sure. All right, now for the next trick. Let's see if it'll lift me. All right, here we go. They seem to be raising into the air. All right, cool. That'll do. Okay, back down here where the green van is stashed. I just checked using the service manual. So we're back here looking at this thing again, and I have just determined that it is the front motor mount that is bad. Right down here, you can see that bolt sticking out and it is flopping around in there like nobody's business. And sure enough, the front motor mount is bad. It's really easy to get to though. It's right on the front under the radiator core support. Uh, so might not even have to jack the thing up. I'm gonna head over to the parts store now and get a new one. And by then my friend should be back and we should be able to get this thing knocked out hopefully in a half hour. So I'm sitting here in the parking lot at the parts store, and I just got the motor mount. I can tell you why it broke. They're extremely crappy. Let me get the lift in, I'll show you. Check this thing out. Now my grip strength is fair to Midland. This is the mount. But look, I can squeeze it with my hands. Um, no wonder the stupid thing broke. That's absolutely insane. And like the other side is just, you can poke your finger through the material, like it's not even connected. Um, we may have to modify this before we install it because that is borderline unacceptable. <laughs> All right, let me head back and uh, we'll get this going. Squeeze it by hand and the rubber's cracking. Awesome. <laughs> All right, let's see if the other side does it. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Yep, now it's old. Wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's about as close as we get to the polyurethane, polyurethane mounts, yeah. That'll do. All right, so the other van has been roughly repaired. Uh, we changed the motor mount on it and made a few mods to it because the new one was really terrible. And I also couldn't get uh, polyurethane mounts. So anyways, I'm leaving this van here. I'm gonna drive the old one back and hopefully we're good. Well, this is peculiar. Um, well, you probably can't see me right now, but it still wobbles. There's something going on. Um, so I'm headed back. It's getting kind of late tonight, so I think I'm gonna leave this thing over here again and then just drive the other van back. I don't know what's going on, but it's not as bad, but it's still there for sure. Okay, so uh, turns out we fixed the symptom, not the problem. The, well, so I came back and I backed the van into the parking space here. And as I did that, I heard a very specific telltale noise. Uh, front wheel drive vehicles have half shafts or drive axles on the front with CV joints or constant velocity joints, and those after a while go bad. They make a very specific sound when you crank the wheel and then hit the throttle. Well, I cranked the wheel around, shifted into reverse, and I heard that telltale crunch. So CV joints, that will definitely cause the wobble. And I will bet you that that extra wobbling is what took out the motor mount uh, because it makes everything shake like crazy 
And if you've got motor mounts that are already weakened and everything is wobbling and flopping around, they're much more likely to break. So, for now, it's gonna stay parked here. I don't really wanna do drive axles. I used to do them a lot in the past and they're a huge pain, even for an able-bodied person. And I don't wish that amount of work on anyone. So I'm gonna call a shop tomorrow and see what they'll charge. I know on my old Subarus, it was like maybe $250 to have them replaced. Um, that was a long time ago, so I'm sure prices have gone up, but I'm gonna check around tomorrow and see what it's gonna cost. We might be getting into the territory where keeping this thing running is becoming expensive or annoying. I don't know. Uh, more to come. All right, we're headed down to the auto parts store now. I need to get some things to uh, get the, the lift on the back of this van. Uh, well, I mean, it works, but I need to plug the holes and replace some hoses. Okay, we got some stuff. Got a little uh, handheld siphon pump, some tubing funnel. I couldn't find hydraulic oil, so I'm just gonna use ATF. But it's all down here in this little bag. So uh, let's get this thing fixed. Okay, so here's the process. Uh, normally there's a fill tube that attaches right here and it comes up so you can add hydraulic oil. Well, that tube got all screwy, so I just put this plug on here. And so what we need to do right now is get a hose installed on here and run it up over to here somewhere so we can fill it. But we also need to get rid of this old fluid that's in here. Uh, we need to change that out with some good stuff. So I've got this little ball siphon pump thing and a funnel, and here's the new tubing we're gonna use. And we're just running uh, bog standard ATF uh, in this. I wanted the lightest weight hydraulic oil that I could find, because when it gets cold outside, the stuff gets thicker and the lift has trouble doing things. So let's see if we can make this work. Okay, so I got a lot of the fluid out, but we can't quite get it all because of how this tank is arranged. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and add some new fluid, run the lift up and down a couple times to mix it, and then we'll drain it again before we do our final fill. All right, we've got a bunch of the fluid in there, so I'm gonna cycle the lift a few times to kind of mix it up and uh, get it out of the lines in the cylinder, and then we'll drain it again. All right, we'll uh, call that good. I'm gonna get the siphon back in here, drain out as much of this as we can, and then we'll do a final fill and be good to go. And the final step, we'll go ahead and top this thing off and then we should be good to go. All right, dump some of this in here. All right, it looks like some amount. The tank is probably a third full. Uh, I think we'll call that good. All right, let's check and see how easily it will lift me now. Ugh, bugs, go away. All right, let's see how this works. It's slowly doing it. I mean, better than it was. Uh, I'm gonna have to help it. I think this is just an issue of the lift being old and what the weight capacity of it is. This lift is only good for 600 pounds. And me in this chair is pretty close to that. Or maybe a little bit more than. Or might even be a little bit over it. Well. Regardless, that's about as good as we're gonna get, so we'll stick the plug in this tube. 
there we go and then clean up our mess put the cover back on and call it a day see the problem with this hydraulic setup here is it was designed to be mounted in a vertical position and this van for whatever reason they decided to lay it flat so it makes everything a little bit tricky as far as the tank being laid on its side and where all the holes and everything go through it but i think i think we should be good i believe i don't know if that screw will hold this or not okay well that's better than nothing the thing's functional again well as long as you're not in a chair that weighs anything okay i'm gonna do something i might regret we'll see but there's a new operating system for the Mac, Mojave, I believe. I'm gonna have an update while I go to the store. I'm right in the middle of editing some stuff, so I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea to potentially screw this thing up when I need it, but we're gonna take that risk. I've left the computer uh, downloading and installing stuff, so hopefully when I get back, it'll be usable. Um, come back to Goodwill. I need to get a cat dish because, well, I'll explain when I get back. I can't use the Rickroll automatic feeder anymore. And also there was something else I can't remember. Uh, hopefully I remember before I go inside. I just remember what it was, new jeans. These are getting a little bit light for my liking. Well, at this Goodwill, uh, they did not have any jeans that would fit me. So I found uh, this thing. This is sort of, um, I think it's marketed to be a jump starter or vehicle charger. It's got um, cigarette lighter plugs on both ends, but the main thing about this, if you look inside, you can see there's a heat sink in there. This thing has a charge controller built into it. So I can use this to connect auxiliary batteries and the charge controller will keep them from getting overcharged or undercharged or things like that. So that's gonna be a handy thing. And it was like four dollars and then we got a couple of uh cat bowls food dishes whatever so yeah semi-successful i figure since we're already screwing around with the van um i've got a power inverter that i want to install in the white van because i haven't done that yet so i just pulled the cover off of the lift control box we've got a nice like double lot wire uh really big power cable coming to the back there's a 120 amp circuit breaker in the front of the van. So I think what we can do is just hook our power inverter directly into that line that powers the hydraulic lift on the van. And as long as we're not, you know, running a toaster oven with the inverter while we're operating the lift, it'll be fine. Worst case scenario, there is a circuit breaker under the hood. If you're trying to use the lift to get out of the van to get to the circuit breaker, obviously that's gonna be an issue, but I'm gonna go ahead and wire that thing up and I will have charging and other auxiliary 110 power available. Now, I actually had a, uh, and still have, a massive power inverter. I don't know where it went. Walmart just had these on sale for $27. Now, it's 750 watts. The whole thing's plastic, doesn't really weigh very much. So it's questionable as to how much power it actually outputs. But if you look here, the thing has three 35 amp fuses on the back of it. So you know there's gonna be some power flowing through this thing. And uh, it's got a little LCD screen, and we've got some USB outputs on it. Uh, came with these clamps. So what I'm going to do is cut off the clampy bits and install some ring terminals like this on the other end. And we're going to go ahead and wire them up to this is our main power wire that comes from up front. And we already have a terminal here, so I'm just going to go ahead and interface it with this. And uh, we should be good to go. I'm pretty sure I have some large ring terminals in this little kit here, or at least ones that are big enough. Uh, of course, as soon as I say that, nope. Um, let me look around. I know I have some somewhere. Look what I found. Package of ring terminals. Knew I had some. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna use these clamps for anything, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the cables right up next to them. And then I'll probably... I'll 
probably just throw these away. All right, let's see if the uh, automatic strippers are uh, up to the task here. <laughs> Booyah, look at that. Nice. Didn't even cut any of the strands of wire. I wonder how many amps these are rated for. Uh, 12, 10 to 12 gauge wire. No label on here. Meh. I found some other ring terminals that were uh, rated for a little bit more power. Got those put on here, got some tape on. Let's go ahead and uh, attach this. Let's see, which way do I want to point these? If I point them down, they're blocking the fuses, but I can always take them off. Yeah, I think that'll be fine there. Snug these up just a little bit. Click, there we go. Torque to spec. Now the negative side. There's <sighs> like helicopters circling overhead. Okay, so we've got our ground hooked up. We've got our power hooked up. Normally the first time you connect these things, move my hand so you can see. Normally the first time you connect these things, all the capacitors and such inside will charge up and you're gonna get an arc. So let's see how big that is. Okay, no arc at all. Uh, cool, I guess. Oh, power switch. Ah, okay, sweet. So this thing, I don't know how solid state this is, but that's actually kind of cool. You don't get the giant arc that you normally used to get on these things when you first powered them up. 12.7 volts, and then we have our power outlet here. I guess that shows uh, shows what power you're using or something. Uh, let's find something and plug it in. I did just realize something though. I don't know if these wires are long enough to get this thing up here where I want it to be. Um, okay, well, what I might do, I guess, is maybe just mount this thing to the wall and then uh, run a power strip or an extension cord up there because I don't have any wiring on me right now to get this hooked up. Oh, and I should probably add some zip ties. Need to be careful about these wires flopping around with all these little components on the logic board here. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna grab some zip ties, get this cleaned up, put the cover on, and then figure out where to mount this in here. I decided, I decided to just go ahead and mount this thing to the top of the control box here. I don't ever stack anything on top of this anyways because of all the electronics and stuff. So I just went ahead and mounted this thing right here. Leaves uh, plenty of space for our wires to come through and uh, I can just pop open the back door if I need to get to this. And I'm just gonna run an extension cord or a power strip up front. And uh, we should be good to go. I'm gonna go grab a wheelchair charger and test this thing out and uh, see how it actually works. Actually, there's a charger right here. It's uh, fairly convenient. It's one of those old school um, uh, transformer style ones. Okay, motor's not running. So let's uh, plug this in and see what it does. Wait for it to boot up, okay. I'm gonna turn on the switch on the charger. And I can't quite read it, but looks like something. I don't know what. Let's plug the chair in. Of course, we're getting a little bit of a buzzing out of this because it's got a transformer in it and this is not a pure sine wave. So let's plug this in and see what happens. Hey, our fan kicked on. You can't see from this angle. Wait, let me flip the screen up. Less than 25% load, 11.9 volts. There's some serious air kicking out of the back of this thing. Charger's working, chair's charging. All right, success. Sweet. And it's starting to rain. Okay, got the uh, power inverter installed in the van, so that's good. Um, I got these um, these little cat food dishes. I had to discontinue 
I had to discontinue the uh, Rick Roll automatic feeding system here. The uh, the big cat, Mo, he's got an issue with his front joints and they're kind of hyperextended a bit. I took him to the vet and he weighs 22 pounds right now. We're trying to get him down to about 14, 15 pounds. And he's on some pain medication and some other things because his front legs are just, uh, yeah, it's painful. Um, I have to feed him this special expensive food and no, okay, gotta be careful what I say here. Um, and the other one, she just eats the regular stuff. So I've gotta put food in two different dishes. So uh, hence the $2 food bowls. But he seems to be doing a little bit better. He's on some little glucosamine chew things that helps for joint support and whatever. But um, yeah, suddenly my cats are becoming convalescent and they require all this special care. But uh, yeah, the little one's 11 years old, the big one's 14. But I mean, overall, they're both doing pretty good. Hey guys. Okay, don't chew on the cords. But yeah, they're here with me and whatnot. Oh, let's see if the computer's done updating. Mmm, new wallpaper. I really hope this thing works, because, um... Oh, we have a dark mode, sweet. Dark mode it is. I really hope this works because I need to uh, I need to use this thing right now. What's going on? What are you doing, huh? It looks like we're good to go. Sweet. All right. Well, until next time.